Good health equals freedom. Okay, why am I saying that? Because oftentimes people think, you know, I don't want to work out daily. I don't want to watch my diet. I just want to live my life. I just want to be free. That's a lie. Poor health reduces your options in life. If you want to be sad, you want to have poor mobility, be more likely to be anxious, then sure, don't structure your day around exercise and don't watch what you eat. But if you want the freedom that only good health can provide, then include that structure. Structure will give you more freedom. Where did we hear that first? Uh, was that a Jordan Peterson twist on the fitness? Freedom. I think uh, Jocko, he's, he does that a lot. Does he? Yeah. Okay, I've, I've heard it in a lot of different uh, arenas. I remember Bishop Barron saying oh, that. Oh, you don't remember who said it first? I don't. We were all together when we heard it. I remember. I remember. I know Bishop Barron did a talk when we were in London, but it was more about like spiritual freedom, right? The, yeah, the yeah. following. Yeah. 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 Um, but around fitness and health, I don't know. But I mean, I, I, you know, this is, I know you guys ran into this as well. How many times people would say they stopped following their workout or diet because they just wanted to quote unquote enjoy their life mm -hmm. or, you know, I just want to be free and do eat what I want type of deal. It's like, that's a myth. It's a myth because it comes with its own consequences and limitations. And I can't think of a less free thing than having really bad health, especially mm -hmm. when it's, when it's preventable. I don't know. I, I, I have family members I see with, with poor health that now are in situations yeah. where they don't have the freedom to get up and go play at the park with their kids because they don't have the energy. They can't do it. Yeah. They don't have the freedom to do certain things because they could die. Yeah, it sets you up for uh, challenges that you don't have the tools to overcome. Like at that point, like life is is riddled with challenges. And it's like if, if you're just going to sit there and, and think everything's going right right now, I mean, you could be in that state, but for how long? There's inevitable you're going to face something that, uh, you know, especially physically, you're going to face something that you need to overcome. I mean, we're at that age now. You guys seen your friends? Oh, yeah. Drop off on stuff like this? Yeah. Like, is there like specific things that you can recall like you guys used to do or they did and like now just like, oh, no, we, that's not something. I mean, I see that like my- Just pick my, up games in general. Yeah, my best friends and I, like one of the one of our favorite things to do was to uh, snowboard. And like mm -hmm. that, I just, I haven't ridden with them in years. They just have completely like given that up. It's just like, oh, the risk and it's too much work. Well, I, like, so yeah, I've, you know, because golf, I've, because I've been- together uh, now. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and because I've been in fitness for so long, so my family knows I've been doing this for a long time. And then my peers in my family, the questions used to be early on, they were like, how do I get jacked? And the questions were, how do I get lean? You know what the questions are now? Yeah. Healthy. I, my back hurts. Yeah, yeah. My mm -hmm. knee hurts. Dude, can you help me with my ankle? Or man, I was painting this or I was you know, taking the garbage out and I totally, and I'll get texts like this. Yeah. From, my blood pressure's too high. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I had crazy a, stuff. Yeah. I had a buddy just reach out to me and he's like, dude, I just, I'm pre-diabetic. Like, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And he's in his, in his forties. Um, I mean, that brings up a good point. Like the older you get, the the bigger the difference is between you know, healthy people and not healthy people. So as we get into our, you know, fifties and sixties and seventies, it's going to become a vast chasm between us and other people or because we chose, Dude. I guess the structure, you know, and I told you night. guys, like, I mean, just a little stupid accident that I had just cutting my fingers, like, and just that limiting factor for me, you know, just took out like a hobby of mine I love. And then also like, it makes everything else a little bit more just annoying. And mm. it puts me in a state where my mood's affected. And, and that's just a really small little thing. But now you add on something that's like, you know, you're, you're facing some kind of health crisis, you know, like, like what is that going to do to your, your overall status in terms of like your mental health? I really have like two categories of friends or like involving like the fitness side that either one, um, they went really hard young. So they were like athletes trained super hard yeah. or maybe CrossFit or they, they did like, they trained like that for uh, their teens into twenties and then they've com completely fallen off or the people that, I've just chose never to really care mm -hmm. about health and fitness. I feel like I have. And I think the ones that like, it's really hard to convince somebody who's never seen the value in exercise and training. The ones that I'm always trying to help save or I guess get, uh, get re excited about exercise and training again are the ones that had a passion for it at one time and still have this attachment to what it looks like. I think the relationship with it was much like probably how mine was when I was younger that I felt that I had to do like this crazy mm -hmm. workout time and, I think one of the biggest things that's helped me as I got older was actually giving myself the freedom to do one exercise. As silly as that may sound, yeah. um, I, I had very much so this 
all or nothing mentality. Yeah, it's like a waste of time if I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, and even during my years of being a, a personal trainer, I thought this way. I was either all on or I was off, you know, and, and I had these massive swings. And because I had a relationship like that, you know, if, if I still had that attitude here in my 40s, I would probably talk myself out of being in shape a lot of times. I was like, oh, man, I can't seem to string three weeks of consistency mm -hmm. together. Therefore, fuck it. Don't do anything. Whereas now this, you know, the last, I'd say five to seven years of my life, I've, I've allowed myself to freedom. Like, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to go and do three sets of squats or I'm going to go do some push-ups and pull-ups. Like I just never thought that way before. And I tell you, that makes a, a huge difference. Oh, I, so yeah. I just, I, so I work out at UFC fit right now and there's this woman that works out in there and older woman, and she trains with, I mean, you could tell she's been working out for a long time. You know, when you see somebody in that age category, you could tell, right? She's been working out for a long time. So I talked to her the other day, you know, I see her every morning and we started, look, it, it turns out she actually under, she actually knew the show. She was friends with Lane Norton. So we had some things in common, but she was, I think she said 63 and you watch her work out. She's got zero mobility issues. I mean, she's squatting, she's deadlifting, she's overhead pressing, mm -hmm. she's moving, she's got more energy than most 20 year olds that I know. And I, I, remember I was watching her work out, I'm like, man, the average 60 something year old that I know in my family is in a different category altogether. Yeah. They're not in here working out like she, not only can they not do what she does, but they couldn't do a quarter of what she does without injuring themselves. Yeah. And this woman's been working out for years and years and years. And so all that time, you know, think about that, right? People are like, I don't want to do that too much structure. I want to enjoy my life, this, that, and the other. You are going to be hit with the reality of la lack of or loss of freedom. Now you can't bend over. Now you can't squat, or now you don't have the energy to do the things that you want to do, or now you have to take this medication. So it's this total like twist. It's a, a really twisted, interesting way that people view exercise and eating. And again, I, I think it comes from what we always talk about, which is like hating yourself where it's like exercise. Oh, that's a punishment diet. That's restrictive. It's like, no man, if you do it to improve and increase the amount of freedom you have in life and you know, it's through your body that you experience life. So if your body's healthy, your experience is going to be better than if it's unhealthy. That's why this is something that you know, should be a part of everybody's life. Yeah. You know? I mean, since we're talking about this, I mean, I've been thinking about this a lot personally, like when you guys are evaluating your own personal health and fitness, like what are areas that you're thinking about like right now, as far as like, yeah, I need more of this, or I need to, I'm working on being better about this or changing this. Like, where are you all at on your personal journey? <sighs> I, I, I overdo everything. Uh, so this is always, this is always a struggle for me, but I'm uh, much better on mobility than I was before. Now I've, I've, it's at least it's been at least six weeks where I've been more focused on mobility for my lower body, which where where I need it most, and have avoided some of the heavy lower body exercises that I don't want to let go of. But that's that's going to be a thing for me. It's always mobility because it's not as fun as you know beating myself. I up mean, I had to like fully commit to go I know. to where you like because I I feel you on on that struggle because that was a big hurdle for me and I I had to like just let it go. I'm 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 not ready to do it, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying, you know. No, I but, mean you admit it, at least you admit it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You're being honest. Like it's it, it's and I get it cuz I remember it was tough like cuz I identified as the buff bodybuilder, yeah. guy, you know what I'm saying? Like that was uh who I was, right? So it's like, man, to, to go the other direction was really tough. What about you? Yeah, I'm somewhat in this hybrid, um, sort of in the middle, because I, I, I was working a lot on bringing back some athleticism and some of the movement that um, I was capable of doing, and especially the fast twitch stuff and, like, mm. making sure I could at least, like, control myself, like, move faster than control. Like, that's all I care. So I'm not, like, all over the place. And it got to a point where it was, like, kind of embarrassing because – you know, when you just, you look back and you're like, man, I used to move so well and I had good form and, you know, that was just something I pride myself in, yeah, yeah. uh, was slowly kind of losing that just based off of habits and like sitting and, you know, being in traffic and like, uh, doing things at the house. And I wasn't really as, um, you know, I didn't have a lot of variety in terms of like movements that I used to do. Uh, so I, I slowly brought that back, but really what we've been talking a lot on the show about like just sort of risk reward and like, you mm -hmm. know, as we're moving forward, like in, in our maps 40 plus, I think I, I was really like kind of evaluating that. And like, even for myself, uh, you know, some of these core lifts and, and just the impact it's had on me over the years. And, and I've actually lightened the load substantially on like back squats and, 
uh, bench press and like some of the main ones and have, you know, shifted a bit more into the hypertrophy uh, side of, of the fence. And so I'm like, you know, for in terms of like the core less, I'm way more hypertrophy focused now and but still incorporating like Olympic rings and then the, awesome. the, the sled and like a lot more functional elements in there. But that's sort of where I'm at. Have you been doing that for a while? How long have you, is it just or is this like probably? Yeah. So some of the more of the hypertrophy stuff, maybe like uh, the last month and a half. It's, it's been a new sort of focus for me. And it, it, my, bo- my body feels You do look better. like you like actually gained a little bit of size. Really? Yeah, I swear yeah, to God. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah I swear to God. How, me too. how about you, Adam? <laughs> <That's all> I- <laughs> Today's giveaway is MAPS Performance Advanced, the new program. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale, MAPS Anywhere and MAPS Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So I have this really interesting thing that's happening right now um, with starting that trisepatide. It, it, it made me reevaluate some things that I had never really thought about, which is really, and I don't, I don't even know if I, so bear with me that I'm like trying to articulate this because I'm still trying to wrap my brain around this. That and and I and I think that it could be linked to my autoimmune issues, and that is that I have trained myself for so many decades now to eat uh, to be a bigger version of myself for so long that double meat everything, right? everything, yeah. yeah, everything is just I have ignore been, your signals exactly, this, you know, ignore yeah, all signals. Yeah. This is what it takes to be this big, and I and I like having this much muscle. It's crazy when you do it for so. I'm the same way. You do it for so long. It, you don't even you don't even realize yeah. it. The, my my default is still. It's just like there's versions of it, right? There's like uh, the clean version of like still a massive amount of yeah. food, just super clean. And then there's the like, you know, eating out and over consuming calories. It's still massive, and that's typically and typically I bounce between the two. I allow a flexibility in the diet. I eat out, have occasional drinks and desserts here and there. Eh, body fat creeps up a little bit. Oh, t- tailor mm. it back back to my but still larger portion. Yes. But the eating clean version is still, I mean, a lot of, a lot of food and a lot of calories. And since I started this trisepatide, like it's just completely just crushed my appetite. And of course the trainer want to be buff guy in my head's doing the math on the, Oh my God, the grams of protein. I'm not eating. This thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, and, I'm, and I'm trying to resist that. And I'm trying to like really be open-minded to, what if I just allow my body to, to go to where it probably wants to go naturally? Um, granted, I am using something to help me that way, so it's probably going to accelerate that process, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like- Still gonna, make good choices. Right, right. I'm going to lean into it versus trying to fight it. Because mm-hmm. Katrina was even asking that, because she was like, well, aren't you not going to get your protein? Like, I'm like, don't, you can't say that to me. Because, <laughs> aren't you going to be missing? You're going to lose a bunch of muscle? I said, well, I, first of all, I don't think I'm going to lose a bunch of muscle. I said, and I- Dude, she's, I, she's triggering the skinny guy. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. What are you doing, Katrina? She has alone. motives. I know. Yeah. Leave I know. alone. She's always like, she likes the big guy, right? For sure. <laughs> and I, I like the big guy too, but, and I don't think I'm going to, and that, that's how I got to get in my own head. I'm like, I'm going to be a small guy. I'm six foot three, 230 pounds, right? So even if I lost 30 pounds, I'm not a small guy, no, no. right? So. So anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm heading in this direction and I'm just trying to evaluate how my body feels. And then the next goal is kind of stuff that you're talking about, Justin. Like I really, really, and I've said this on the show before and I hate talking about it publicly because then I get all the DMs of people asking me where I'm at with it. And again, this is me talking out loud. I haven't fully committed to what I'm going to do yet, but I really want to get back into basketball shape, but I know I can't do that until I get my size, my body down to like basketball size, what mm-hmm. I was, I was 190, you know, at most 200 pound athlete. Like I'm a 230 pound, you know, ex bodybuilder dude now. And mm-hmm. so there's a huge gap there. And so I'm trying to just l- let this go where I'm, I'm eating uh, with, you know, like when I'm hungry, making good choices, allowing the scale to drop, not worrying you're about- So you know what's cool about this for people listening, you're, you're so growth minded that you're using this and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to kind of little title here to what's happening. You're using this as an opportunity for personal growth mm. is what's happening, right? Because you're challenging your old, the way you felt about yourself, which you probably thought wasn't a problem. I, and now it's surfacing. That's the part that's interesting to me is that. Uh, that's how insidious. Yeah, right. Now that's the part that's really interesting to me is that if you were to ask me like, um, like, that's why I thought I was a good candidate for bodybuilding because 
I had moved past those insecurities, right? And even like my the example of letting it go, becoming the mm -hmm. mobility guy and going down that path, like um, I was really okay with that. It mm -hmm. took work. I'm not gonna say it was like all yeah. easy, like, cause that's why I understand the struggle that you have. Like, but I mean, I, I was able to do it. I committed to it and I did, did good. Like I became like a really mobile person that I didn't, I lacked and it was fully committing to that direction. So I really had thought I had completely moved past this, but what I never had really thought about was like, wow, maybe what I even thought as my, my my default back to eating good is still in such a surplus of what I naturally really want for my body type that I j I didn't even realize that hmm. and so yeah and and only this has only been triggered by this trisepatite because it has it has crushed the appetite so much and let me tell you it is it is fucking weird man I'm only on week two right now you know how skeptical I am but uh and and maybe this has something to do too with um. I'm so low calorie that I I crave really healthy nutrient dense food, whole foods hmm. to the point. And this is and Katrina made this comment the other day in the kitchen. She's like, because she was asking how I'm feeling and find what I noticed and this and that. She goes, you know what I noticed? That's really interesting. She goes, in the 13 years we've been together, if I don't feel like cooking, you never uh, you never balk at us ordering out. And when even when you're on your diet or like that, you just choose a healthy choice. Mm -hmm. well, okay, we'll get Nick the Greek or you know, we'll order in something that's a healthy choice still. She goes, I've never seen you ask what we're having for dinner. And then I tell you, oh, I'm just, honey, I've been, I don't want to cook tonight. And then you get up and go to the grocery store and go get something and then cook it yourself for us. Like that's, I've never seen that. It's very mm -hmm. interesting. It mm -hmm. is. Yeah. It's interesting. And it, and it is interesting how, so I think the way that you're using this is the way that people can use these peptides is GLP ones successfully. In other words, if you use this peptide, so think of this- A behavioral you, hack. Thank you. You, you, you Matt, There's two scenarios here. Scenario one or person one goes on terzepatide or semaglutide and then just eats less, lose weight, doesn't really examine and, and aim for personal growth during that period. I think they'll rebound when they go back off. Other, other yeah. person or second example, person does this and then they examine wow, I had a bad relationship with this or my God, I reached for food so much when I was anxious or stressed or depressed or this is what it feels like when I eat this way. I think if you use it as a tool for that kind of growth, then the odds that you're going to be successful post-peptide are going to be much higher. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It's a, And it's very new. And you said now with your autoimmune, because of the quantity of food is less, you're, are you noticing a difference in your Yeah, I mean, it's really good right now. I mean, it's really good right now. I wonder now. if you're just stressing your gut from the amount of food That's that you're- 100% what I'm piecing together right oh, now. God. I mean, I've been trying wow. to solve this thing for- You think my gut issues are really- crazy. Oh, I- <laughs> I know that. <laughs> yeah. That was a dumb question. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Mine's all repressed, like, <laughs> shit that You just I have anger in there, bro. Yeah. yeah, it's all in my body. Yeah. <laughs> well, me. what's going to be- What's, what's really interesting too is you're that you're going to cry if you go to Zepatai. You're just a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of crying will come out. It's all going to fucking come out once. It's going to be a hot mess. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's been, an, it's it's interesting, right? And again, I'm just uh, sharing again, with the audience. like And people I'm, listening, don't go online and try and find a source. Go to mphormones.com. Oh, yeah, our, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm really. not even telling anyone to do it yet, right? Like, yeah. I, I'm just, the whole point of me doing this, because it's not like I'm a person who needs to lose a bunch of weight or anything like that. It was like, I am so, I was so curious about mm -hmm. the other stuff that everybody was saying. Yeah. Like, the what the what one of the fascinating things about this report is what it's doing neurologically, not what it's, like, this isn't a, a fat burner. It's like, it's not, that's what I was trying to explain to Katrina. She's like, why would you take this? This is not, you don't need to lose weight. Somebody was asking me that. Yeah. Like, why was Adam doing? He's not like, I'm like, he's the perfect person to do it. Cause yeah. you know, we, we don't have that uh, perspective. He, exactly. None of it's not out there for somebody to really like analyze it, you know, from that lens. And I think that that's going to bring a different, uh, a completely different conversation. We don't to like to sell or talk about anything that we haven't necessarily experienced either firsthand or, you know, multiple times with clients. Yeah. So that's the main reason why. So otherwise it's just, yeah, I, I, I was really, I mean, cause obviously and truth be told, truth be told, Adam would say, and he will, if this is ends up, if that's why if I it ends up want, not being a good thing, he'll that's say, that's why it. I'm even has, I mean, I, I know I want to be, sh I want to share as we go through yeah. this, but I mean, we're only two weeks in right now. Okay. So like, but what I'm feeling, and no, even like, so, uh, yesterday was my shot and day six. So, right. So every seven days I have to take a shot. Uh, on day six was the first time 
I even considered eating like a like a like a snack mm. or like I thought I had ice, I've had ice cream this whole time in the freezer, right? So I've left I intentionally left candy, ice cream, things in my house that I could go get if I want to. I don't even, I don't even want to make it easy for myself, right? To and I and I haven't even had the urge to do anything like that. And the first time, like it had actually kind of crossed my my mind, like oh, I could go downstairs and go have that. And I'm like, still didn't want it. But it, that was the first time, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting that. I haven't noticed even the thought of it until right now. And this is day six of taking the, uh, Weird. And, and then the next day I took the, sh the, took the shot yesterday. And then of course, again, Wild. Like, yeah. yeah wow. So, Hey, since we're talking about like, uh, you know, medical interventions, I just read this crazy article on Viagra and Cialis and you would not believe what this article is about. So it's not about erections or sexual performance or whatever those drugs are, are used for, but check out the summary of um, what I'm reading here. So Viagra and Cialis. So these are PDE5 inhibitors. They dramatically increase what's called nitric oxide, dilates the blood vessels. This is why men get a better erection when they're on them. But dilating the blood vessels also lowers blood pressure a little bit. Nitric oxide is good for your blood vessels. You know, Viagra, in fact, was initially researched as a blood pressure medication, but they saw that it lowered blood pressure a little bit, but you know, everybody got boners, so yeah. here we'll sell it for that instead. Yeah. <laughs> well, check this out. Byproduct. Now that Silas and Viagra have been around for a long time, you know what they're finding? Hmm. They're more potent at decreasing all-cause mortality <gasps> than statins or blood pressure oh drugs. Oh, my God. How funny <laughs> is that? How funny in is comparison that? That's to my next statin, multivitamin. In comparison to statins and blood pressure-lowering uh, drugs, wow. men who took Viagra and Silas had better all-cause mortality. And they were happier. <laughs> and then they're probably <laughs> as a result. Yeah. All Double because whammy. because the boost in nitric oxide is good for the so, arteries. Okay, so the what, heart. okay, I used wow. to think that there would be like a, like is a bad part of that. Does is the body going to adapt to taking that on a regular mm. basis? Is there any like when, like baby aspirin was wasn't that uh, that's different. recommended? Yeah, it's different. Yeah, that pathway. Thing, that but so is there is there potential that this could be considered a thing that people would take? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes, yeah, so you, what you're probably going to see, because now you see PD-5 inhibitors are getting recommended to men with prostate enlargement. Where's the, where's the Viagra stock at right now? Yeah. Ticker. Dude, Tell yeah. me the ticker. Um, but now I wouldn't even, I would go with the other ones, the longer acting ones like Cialis or whatever. But, um, and I think that you're going to start seeing them get recommended to men with, uh, you know, heart, heart dude, issues. Dude, what's happening? <laughs> like <laughs> like all of a sudden now like everybody's like you know the, the go-to is like let's get on hormones yeah <laughs> let's get viagra it's healthy yeah. <laughs> what's happening what's happening dude? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> but i thought so, that was yeah, really imagine talking to yourself like you know that's 20 so, years that's so yeah. interesting i thought that was very interesting and, and i think what yeah, you're going to see so athletes have been using um yeah you know viagra and salas for a while now because they notice improvements in performance. Bodybuilders were the first ones to mess with these. It used to be when I was, when I was uh, 17 and 18 years old, the gym I used to go to, in fact, the one that you guys used to, we did the very first version of maps, uh, black, right. Maps aesthetic. Uh, we've shot in that gym, mm -hmm. that gym. I remember as a 17 year old, we, I'd find pills like on the floor once in a while in the bathroom, like Viagra pills. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. like, I was, I yeah. never connected that as a kid. I know, mm -hmm. Why would there be like boner pills in the, yeah. in the men's locker improves, room? And more than once, like it was like one time as I seen it multiple times. Improves blood flow. There's a stock right there. It's pretty, that's, oh, it's, that's the Eli Lilly. They're involved with Cialis. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that's word. gone up. Mm. <laughs> just like it's been on uh, Viagra. Wow, look at it's that. all there. That yeah. stock is <laughs> up. <It's> rising. <laughs> no pun intended. Very swollen. Dude, but, talking about mobility, I, uh, I, do you, do you, have you guys ever just hit your leg on the side of your bed so hard ugh. that you feel? That's the worst. God, so, I'm so annoyed because the sheets go over ugh. the bed just enough to where you can't tell. You know, like that. a wood frame or whatever? Yeah, dude. So mm. my daughter. I'm, I'm Metal ones are the worst. Oh, bro. So I'm putting my daughter to sleep. So Jessica tries first. No success. And my daughter typically goes down easy. So for whatever reason, I think it's because we messed up the, the the bed routine. So parents listening right now. Oh, that's or always. Or new parents. That's always it, bro. Keep it exactly the that's same. Right. Yeah. Any change. Okay. And what was the change? Blame yourself immediately the, if you change it. The yeah. change was that both of us went upstairs with her to put her down. And I think she saw both of us yeah. thought, oh, it's party time. <laughs> Did not want to go down. Yeah. I leave. Jessica's having a tough time putting her down. We switch off. I try to put her down. I put her in. She starts crying a bunch. Try to calm her. Doesn't work. I pick her up and I'm like mad. I'm holding her and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm walking, bam, right into the side of the bed, dude, <laughs> bro. So hard, but I didn't want to scare the baby, so I did one of those. 
You know, you're holding yeah. it in, dude. Oh, bro, I hit it so hard. It's like swollen right here, dude. I was like, damn it. Oh, she went down eventually. Did you see but. that? I, I I put in my story a couple days ago. There was this guy that did a video where he had, it was almost like a little merry-go-round thing that it had all of the the um, Razor scooters on it. And so he he, he put one shin out. Oh, yeah, so I did see that. Dude, oh why <laughs> it's just like the masochism like no like how, and then did the other leg after that and i just one time that's happened to me and, and it was like i almost cried this is the scary go round yeah, yeah two of the most pain two of the most annoying pains ever is if you hit your toe on like a post or something yeah or you step that, on legos step on legos yeah. that's terrible that's horrible and then i don't know about so my wife if she sees a, a pimple on me for whatever reason across the house she's got to come over and squeeze it yeah. i hate that it's the worst i don't know why it's such it's, <laughs> it's the most intolerable pain i'm like sitting there and she's like you're being a baby like, stop <laughs> well, well the worst is because it's like kind of tickles at first because they go all soft and then they, <laughs> yeah, yeah and you're dude. like whoa that was like zero to a hundred that's such a chimp thing too you know what i mean like she's like trying to it is weird that me. it is weird that women yeah. like to do that because i don't know like no thing. dudes that are into that no 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 you want to squeeze a pimple off your I wife's don't, don't uh, yeah, nice. come here bro <laughs> Nah, no, no, it doesn't work. That doesn't I, have, happen. I have two things that I want to bring up. One of them, uh, one of them, I want Doug to share something. But first, before I do that, I wanted to share this clip with you guys. Um, Jerry sent it over to me. I thought it was really interesting. You know, uh, we're working with Get Dynasty, and um, I just keep finding more and more uh, reasons why to do this. And I was like, I, I wanted to show you guys and see what you thought and see if you guys even knew this. Doug, I sent it over to you. Can you uh, pull up the pull up the video so the guys can watch it real quick? Words you didn't know till you had to know, part one conservatorship conservatorship is whenever somebody leaves a minor child some money whoever is awarded over that child will get the conservatorship to be over their finances you'll get a court liaison and you'll have a judge that will be over it that way that they can oversee how the child's money is being spent and make sure that nothing is being withheld from the child although i do understand that this service has to be in place i did not know that it had to be in place for natural parents See, my husband passed away two years ago and he left our son, Liam. Liam, say hi. hi. He left him 5% of his life insurance. Although he thought he was doing the right thing, when he passed, he didn't have a will at the time. So all of the things that we had had to go into probate. I had to pay thousands of dollars to become the conservator over his account. Anytime I needed to use the money, I had to pay court fees and filing fees and all these other things to be able to use the money. So thousands of dollars was wasted to get the conservatorship and hundreds of dollars was wasted every time I needed to use it. If my husband would have left the money into a trust, this could have all been avoided because the trust would have told us how he wanted it to be taken care of. So my name is Nikki and I'm your widowed friend. Whenever you leave money to a minor, please put it in a trust so that, that way that you don't have to go through what we had to go through. Have a blessed day. Uh, wow! How, how crazy is that? I did not know a lot of no parent. A lot of people don't know this, bro. That's crazy. This is one yeah. of those things where it's like wealthy people. They have family lawyers. They have family setups, and yeah. they take care. If you're middle class, like a lot of people don't know this. If you die and you leave money to your kid, even though their mom is still alive, it's got to go through probate, and then she has to go and spend thousands of dollars, and then every time they need to use it, they spend money to try and use the money for the kid. Whereas if you had a trust, it was it's a done deal. I didn't know that. And I mean, a trust, yeah, obviously we're set up. But I did still before that. Not one of my motivations was, hey, I needed to worry about if I pass, like Katrina wouldn't automatically just get all control. Isn't of it that. crazy? Yeah, weird. Yeah, it's terrible. So, so if people don't know. We work with a company called Dynasty, and they are one of the first, if not the first, company ever to allow people to create a trust online for free. Because one of the other challenges was if you wanted to make a trust. It would cost you hundreds or thousands of dollars with a lawyer. So mm -hmm. now you got kids, your dad, mom, whatever. You want to create a trust, got to go to a lawyer, spend thousands of dollars to set this up. Every time we need to change something, call the lawyer, pay them their hourly fee. With Dynasty, it's getdynasty.com. It's free. And it takes, I think it took five minutes to set up a trust yeah. Yeah. on there. So yeah, that's I know. Totally I don't know. I keep it, learning yeah. more and more about, I didn't realize how, one, how simple your cousins made it. And then two, how important it is. Even if you don't have millions and millions of dollars mm -hmm. to leave, even when you, by the time you get your first house or your first asset, in my opinion, like you want to be already thinking. And the way they set it up too is you can go on there and add assets and manage it all um, through them. So it's super easy. So, yeah, it actually saves you money long term the earlier tons, you do it. Yeah. Tons of money. Yeah. Speaking of money, I, I, I got to bring this up to you, Adam, because you love this. 
So I'm in a group text with my cousins and, and my brother. And my brother sends over this clip of this YouTube influencer <laughs> like guy who's like, you know, <laughs> uh, a day trader. Okay. He's in his twenties, day trader. He's okay. like, dude, this guy makes like $30 million a year. This is crazy. And it's like a picture of his kid was like Lamborghinis and a big house. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. no, he doesn't. He's like, yeah, he totally talks about how he does it. I'm like, listen, if you're making $30 million a year day trading, yeah. either A, you're the worst business person ever to de devote hours to making YouTube videos, <laughs> or yeah. B, your whole business is convincing people you make a yes. lot of money. Yeah. You know? So, I, so the, there's a lot of somebody. So, somebody uh, gave me like the, the down low on that, right? So I guess I'm not very familiar with the, the, the day trading circle and some of that, but to your point, this has become like this massive space of all these young 20 year old kids that are selling all these courses online to teach you how to do what they've done. And look at my Lamborghini, look at my big house. Like I've done all stuff. Most of them either rent the house and the Lamborghinis are leased. And even if they bought the Lamborghinis, I mean, you still get a Lamborghini for a few hundred thousand dollars doesn't make you a, a worth tens of millions. But typically of only they do with a bunch of other influencers. Yeah. That's sure. the other. Yeah. So that was uh -huh. the other hack that I didn't know <laughs> yeah, about. Right. That's like a big thing, especially in the LA market. So yeah. with that, and with influencers is, five five guys go in on it and they all purchase it together and they, they use just, it for social media yeah they just use it for social media and then they write it off because it's they're using it for social media so but the other hack or thing that they're doing is i mean to, right away that should be a, like to your point about not only making youtubers but if you're selling courses if you're selling courses online on how to make money and you're already making tens of millions why would you waste your time selling you know 500 900 dollars courses like the, go spend more time day trading because that's what you're really good at yeah, my, so, right my, my buddy He's like, oh, he just he just wants to help people. No, <laughs> so okay, so really? what, so what these guys do is well, this. You guys make money too, because everyone's like, I've seen it, I've seen his account. Yeah, show the video. So what they do is they get like four or five phones or more. I don't know how many they do. They get multiple phones, and you can sign up for ghost accounts. So they let you like these these day trading accounts. You can just, like practice. So, so you're not, you, it's not real, it's not real money. Yeah. So then what they do is they have like four or five of these phones and then they're, they're practicing all these trades. And if they uh, hit a few. Yeah. Then they hit a few, then they share with the internet. I'm like, oh, that's a brilliant freaking hustle. So it looks like, yeah. Wow. So it's like, I did. yeah, look Smoke it. Cause they ears. do, cause they do that. Like they prove and it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a, and you can't tell the difference on the screen from where you're looking at if it's a you know, an account that they're play money. It's not their real account or what it's like got. a simulation or whatever. Yeah. They would not. That's what I was trying to tell them. Like they would not devote because making and editing YouTube videos and putting them out there and being an influencer. Yeah. We know how long that takes. It's work. Yeah. Why would he, if he's making $30 million a year, do the math on how much you think he's making per day, day trading. Why would he waste his time making videos on YouTube? It's, and then sell these courses when he could just make more money day trading. The only reason why this isn't so obvious to people is because we're still in the middle of this transition of old media to new media. Yes. Because yeah. this is no different than commercials you yeah, see on same TV. Crap all the the day. Day. Like, it's not like nobody runs out after they see a commercial on TV and they're like, dude. oh, dude, this guy's, it's like, it's the he's same an actor hustle and he's paid to do that. And, it was, yeah. and farmers put, the, put it together. It's like, yeah. come on. It's like, but because we're still we're still in this transitional period of that this is new media and this is how you market this is how you sell these guys are wow. doing this as a tax write off they're either leasing or they're going five ways into it they're using good and it and it's all fair game because it's marketing and advertising and so everybody's i mean even i was again like man there's a lot of these young kids that are yeah. like making <laughs> hell of money like what am i doing wrong like if this kid this 20 year old kid can figure out how to day trade i'm I so should be able skeptical to. like the, the whole like finance and money space and like how to make you like like telling people how to make money like that's like such a like how many can you even think of that you would be like yes that guy is super authentic it's i mean remember no. when we all first got together i mean doug knows this because he's been in the you know marketing space for a long time and he's just like man if you guys want to make money the biggest way to make money is to sell other teach other people how to make yeah. money. Yep. it's also the easiest way too, to because it like the proof like that you see the watches you see the cars and like you know yeah. you do the math it's and you're like flash. oh that's a million there, that's a hundred thousand. It's no different than some some bodybuilder fanatic. You're saying, right. I know how to train You're people right. and it's I know a, how to put people exactly on diet. Like that. oh, yeah. red, red that's why you have all these Instagram totally. people for that got you know, yeah. took first place in a bodybuilding show. And, and now got, they're like professional uh, trainers. Yeah, now they're coaches. coaches online making two hundred thousand dollars a year teaching people how to get ready for a show <laughs> and they don't know anything really about exercise and nutrition. They just know how to diet and take steroids and they did a good job at it and so now they sell everybody else super but i mean that's yeah. the, the easiest to me red flag is just like 
It's like, okay, if we were, if you, here's how you would know Mind Pump isn't as big of a deal as Mind Pump is, is if you saw me, I have five slots for personal training available for you guys right now. I have five slots available for one-on-one training. Like, what the fuck is he doing that's one-on-one it, training if his business it. is that big? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would I be training people one-on-one? Like, it just doesn't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. why would you be selling There's only four court? left, by the way. One just yeah. popped up yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> Limited I'm space. I'm into going out of business business. That's, yeah. that's yeah. my favorite. But I mean, it's yeah. the same thing for uh, for that space, right? If you're a big financial day trader guy and you're making thirty million dollars a year, what are you doing selling five ninety nine courses? <laughs> like speaking uh, of you hustling, care, dude, because you care, yeah. give yeah. it away then. If yeah. you're really that nice, if you're really making that much money, man, give it away. People. They don't. Yeah. They yeah. don't care. <laughs> All right. Speaking of new media, this law mm. in Florida that banned social media because now social media companies are going to get fined. I think five hundred thousand dollars. Interesting. Right? They're going to get fined massively. Oh, that's how they're handling If they that. fail to to cancel accounts of kids that are the under the state can do that? Yeah, they can do that. Yeah, they could totally do that. I didn't know they had yeah. the power to do that. They that's do. interesting. So they pass this if they're law. a resident of Florida and they can If 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 Facebook doesn't I don't know if they have to be a Yes, I think they have to be a resident of Florida. If they're found not canceling accounts of of, of minors. This, this is interesting. Then they, then yeah, they will get fined. This is this be is a big super deal. interesting, Sal, because that it's so weird how a state can impose a law and now a company is responsible because that there might even be a department for Facebook that goes in and checks mm -hmm. state by state. Mm -hmm. Sure. How old are these people that are on there? Like you yeah. never even had to do that. Now you have to do this. And also you need to build an entire department yeah, or build team a whole yep. section dedicated of that. So you avoid getting yep. sued. Now, yep. now here's wow. a deal. Smart social media companies, I think. And the problem with this is that they were looking at this, the horizon and so many of their users were kids. Mm -hmm. So I get the, the struggle, but if they were smart, they would have looked at all this and the data and said, you know what? We need to get ahead of this because, because here's what I think. Mm -hmm. Florida passed this bill. And guess what? Most people like it. I'm seeing yeah. uh, people on social. You know Chamath yeah. from the from yeah. Olin. He yeah. just did a, a, a tweet on it. Yeah, and he goes, "I totally support this." You're talking about free market people who, yeah. when it comes to kids, I'm the same way. Like I'm when it Kid, comes to children, kids different category. I'm pro regulation. Yeah. When you're an adult, now I'm definitely very different. But when it comes to kids, like you know, I think it's not a bad thing. And social media has been shown to have uh, terrible effects on children. And yeah. so, and I think it's going to spread. That's what I think. What do they say? So they require Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter require users to be at least at least 13 years old. Yeah. So they must be collecting information about the age of these yes, kids. They are. So from that standpoint, they could go do a search That's most right. likely and delete those accounts. Yeah. So the other thing I would, would be curious about is it's like, you know, is this really difficult to bypass? I you mean, have to get a VPN. What do you mean? You could get a VPN, then they don't know where you're coming where you're, from. No, I mean, like, how hard would it be for my, well, I mean, my son's too young to be an example, uh, your son to get on there and click, I'm older than 15. Yeah. Because it's going to be something like that, right? That It's a game. It's all, it's literally, yeah, it's, it's like if you else. get on any site you that can. requires you to be 18. You, you can, just, but let me put it to you this way. You're a parent in Florida. Yeah. Okay. And look, I have teenage kids. Justin does too. Uh, and people are like, just parent your kids more. No, I get that, but it's hard. It's hard. It's hard parenting, especially 14 year old, 15 year olds, very difficult. They're not around you all the time. It's not like a toddler. You can keep your eye on them all the time. So now imagine the state passes this law. Now you can be like, Hey, why do you have, you don't have, why do you have Instagram on your phone? You can't have that. That's illegal. Take that off. So now you get a little assistance mm -hmm. from the state. So sure, the kid could go, just like a kid could go find alcohol. Exactly. But the law makes it a little more challenging. Okay, that's fair. That's yeah. a good point. That's a, that's a fair point. I mean, I feel like it's a really easy thing to get around, but that's a good point right there, even just from a, from a parenting standpoint of that's like, right. hey- it's not even legal for you to do that yet. I don't let you smoke cigarettes. I don't let you drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. One day you'll be old enough. You can be able to make those decisions. But as long as you live under my roof right now, that's I what you predict do. this to not spread. Not to mention, I mean, I mean, all of the. I would, I would assume there's been a lot of cases where people have like, you like minors have gotten into trouble with like pictures and videos yeah. and things used against them that could set them up for just like horrible outcomes long term Dude. that affect the way that they have a career the affect the way that they have a relationship with somebody listen, and it's it's so unfortunate listen the data is connecting social media use to anxiety depression suicide we're seeing rates and, and now it's not the only thing okay i'm not stupid i think it's there's inactivity i think that there's a lot of things in the changing landscape that's contributing to this but you are seeing suicide rates anxiety and depression rates among kids that we've never seen yeah never and and it's worse when they use a lot of social media and they're finding the relationship is not 
you know, they thought maybe it was a two-way relationship. Well, if you're more depressed, you're more likely to use social media. No, the data is showing using the social media is leading to these things like depression. Yeah. So I think this is going to spread. My prediction is that pretty soon cell phone companies are going to are going to not let you download these apps unless you're a certain age. That's what I think. Oh, wow. Because yeah. now that you have a precedent set in Florida, lawsuits will start to follow. Once these companies are like, uh-oh, we're getting sued. Because right. imagine if you had a kid who's 14 who committed suicide. Now you have a case where you could take it to the courts and say, they shouldn't have been on the social media. You guys allowed this to happen. You guys, that starts to spread. Uh, I think this is, I think that laws like this are going to start to take hold. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. I can see that. I absolutely. I and mean, I, I'm for it too. It is I mean. a huge problem that, yeah, they're just now <laughs> sort of really like attacking it. I mean, I think that uh, this is not a short road to regulating pornography for minors as well. I think that's the next step i think that should have been first but yeah i think that's the next step how is it not regulated? it's already regulated they yeah. don't regulate very well well i mean that's how i feel like, <laughs> hey, that was my that's Are my point 18? about facebook yes that's what I, that, I mean that's my point there too though yeah yeah so it's still yeah you know it's still just i think as what easy. they'll do in other in some places they've actually been able to you have to register your age with the state and then that's required to get on the site type of deal hmm. the way around it is to get a vpn by the way that clip we did on the dangers of pornography is flying. Pornhub. So I was on there last night with Katrina. So her and I have been happened to be on there. And one of the things we were going through, like stars, right? So there's this category where you can go in there. She's like, is that what I think? Is that B stand for? I think I said, they get billions of views oh, per video. Yeah. Billions? On lots of them and most of them. Yeah. That really brought into perspective to yeah. me because when what you look other at- other videos on YouTube or anything even bro, scratch you, that surface? What does that tell the you? The damage that pornography is causing is one of the most undiscussed dangers that's happening. It is completely warping and twisting people's minds and it molds the brain in the way that drugs do. And it's changing how people are relating to each other and connecting. In all of human history, never did any single person have that much access to that much novelty of stimulus oh, yeah. you could be an emperor of rome two thousand years ago you would not have even close to the access of novelty that a 15 year old kid yeah. on their iphone has yeah that is causing some serious problems and nobody's talking about and, it. and that's the, the nobody's talking about it and how crazy it is was the thing that i think that really triggered that for me was you know like, what holy you shit, know what's wild so, yeah I know what's and cool. somebody <laughs> my, poor, my poor wife got uh, so many oh uh, no you know the one downfall of taking something out of context like that everybody's like the <laughs> truth <laughs> <laughs> is getting all kinds of DMs. <laughs> like, like what was uh, it yeah, yeah. Oh, so <laughs> here's check this out somebody in there posted um all the studies that they're finding related to uh consumption oh i saw that i saw that the one studies show desensitization and tolerance so over time frequent exposure leads to desensitization where individuals require increasingly extreme or novel stimuli to experience arousal this can cause big problems there's also a rewiring of neural pathways the pornography consumption can alter the brain's reward system, leading to changes in neural pathways associated with pleasure and arousal. That's what drugs do. Um, negative impact on intimacy. They're finding that excessive pornography use has been linked to relationship to satisfaction, intimacy issues, and decreased sexual satisfaction, and uh, distorted views on sexuality, and social isolation and withdrawal. That's what the data shows mm -hmm. on that. Wow. I think there's a, I think that's going to be next on the horizon. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know. You know, talking about kids and stuff like that. The other huh. thing I wanted to bring up was, uh, when, when Doug and I, um, went, um, took off on our little trip that you guys didn't get to come to. That's so cute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was sharing with me, uh, about this, uh, it was a, like a retreat that Bree got to do where he had, I don't know if you guys knew how to do this. He had to like write a letter. to Yeah. Her. He did tell me. Yeah. He so you wrote a letter and then she read it so many days in. So what happened is they went on a three day retreat. They, the kids didn't take their phones, which is such a great idea there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and parents, all parents wrote letters to the kids about, you know, how much they love them, uh, you know, their hopes and dreams, whatever they wanted to say, what, what whatever was on their heart. And so I wrote a letter, uh, her mom wrote a letter, her grandparents wrote letters, her friends wrote letters. And so during this retreat, they chose one letter from each parent. So not both parents, one parent to read in front of everybody. So there was like 50, 55 people, mm. kids that went on this retreat. And these letters were very heartfelt mm. and there was apparently like kids were crying. Oh, it was such wow. a, a emotional It'd be so experience. amazing to see that, you know? Yeah. And then, then they went into a room and everybody had a packet with all their letters. It was in a big shape of a heart 
and they went and got their wow. packet and they'd read their letters. And apparently uh, it was just a time for kids to really talk about their situations, their relationships with their parents, you know, and a lot of them came to these really interesting realizations. So when they came back, we all met the students when they came in, they had no idea we we're going to be there. Right. And they, they didn't know you were, they, you, you, the kids didn't know the letters were even coming. They right? didn't know about the letters. They didn't know we we're going to be there after the retreat was over. So we were all there waiting for them. They came in and of course they were all excited to see us. And then the kids had an opportunity to get in front of everybody and share. Oh my God. What? And the kids, I, I swear, every one of these was so, so heartfelt these kids, like uh, kids, were crying. I mean, even these. Did tough you hold boys. it together? Did you hold it together? Not, no. When Brianna went up there, I didn't hold it together. Of course, <laughs> I would be bawling. Yeah, I'm starting to get teary eyed just thinking about yeah. it. Uh, but these kids, like, like I, I realized I was basically a little shit. I didn't wow. respect you as parents, and I know how much you've done for me. I mean, this is what some of these kids were saying. Wow. Uh, it was, um, uh, I had a horrible relationship with my brother, and then there's kids like, well, my, my dad passed away, you know? It's oh. just like, oh my God, this thing was just tearing everybody up. But these kids, they had license after being there for three days to really express themselves and not have fear of judgment from their, their peers. Yeah. And boy- I mean, it opened them up in such ways because they're teenagers, right? Yeah. And there's so many pressures in school to be a certain way. And then you're in this environment where everybody's just really able to open themselves up and to be honest and to be vulnerable. Yeah. And I just saw like these kids' transformations were uh, amazing. Wow, I wow. could tell that. And for Brianna, it was fantastic too. I mean, she came back and she's just been like such a, I mean, she's always a joy, but like I've really noticed. I felt like she leveled up in her maturity after that. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> I would suggest any school doing something like that would be a fantastic That's thing so great. to do. Yeah. Wow. That's wow, that great. sounds powerful. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the two times when you're most influential over the your, the, your child's brain and how it wires is when they're like babies and toddlers. And then when they're adolescent teenagers, like the two most impactful times you can really, I just, them. I think too, this is an area that we're, we're just, we're missing in ed educating our kids so bad. Like totally. mm -hmm. that's a private school, obviously, Yeah, you know, and this was, this was one of the things like when Katrina and I first got together, it was like the big debate between her and I about, you know, would we put our son in private school? And I was so hard about it. And, and for this exact example, I don't think this is shared enough. These types of things that get funded and get, that you can do and how important those are in the development of kids. Like that's, I mean, you walk, got to watch it and it was transformative for every freaking kid that was in there. Like, imagine if all of our schools were doing things like that. I just, I really wish we would move to something different with the way and make schools competitive to where you, the, everyone was leveling up like that, coming up with things that mm -hmm. were transformative for kids and that were impacting and parents were going, oh my God, well, my school did this. Oh my God, this school did that. And they were competing with each other to provide the best education system for them instead of this government funded bullshit all we care about is they show up and they pass these generic tests and we push them through school yeah. it's like yeah it's so terrible man and it starts with our kids and you hear stuff like that i mean it's unbelievable that she got the opportunity you got the opportunity to do that but it's also highlights how much the the rest of the people are missing out yeah, there's a on massive the, deficit there huge yeah, 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 yeah. huge yeah, man yeah. i mean i have friends that have their kids go to the public schools but what they've done is they've gotten really involved with the other parents you got to be if yeah. you're if you, you if the kids are huge if, you yeah, if, public, you, if they're in that, public then sure. you've got to be and i have yeah. my, my best friend and his wife are both public school teachers and they, of course they defend you yeah. know and and i get it if that's what you do and and the, by the way this is not me saying that there's not incredible public school teachers but the system itself is is broken and terrible and it doesn't mean that there's not great teachers in there and it would, i can only imagine those great teachers that teach at public schools have they had the resources and the ability it just doesn't make sense to me that uh a, a phenomenal impactful teacher makes right around the same amount as one that has been shipped around to different schools because they've had terrible performance and complaints mm -hmm. and that's what tends to happen it makes no sense to me mm -hmm. i think if you're that impactful and that good you should get paid more and they should learn from you. And if you're a school and you're doing great, you should get more funding. And other schools that do a shit job should 
should either change or go out of business. It's really top. That it's really top down, though. I mean, yeah. that's like that's something that the school puts together, right? Like, of course, great teachers show up and do it, but yeah. they're part of a very well thought out system. Somebody has somebody at the top goes. This is so important at this yeah. stage of their lives. We're going to do this. We're going to we're going to make the parents do this thing. We're, I mean, they literally like that takes some organization to do that. And yeah, absolutely. Get, and buy in to get everybody mm -hmm, yep. to do that, and then look at the outcome of that. So I nice, mean, incredible, yeah. man. Speaking yeah. of kids, did you guys try Organifi's the immunity powder? For I just kids? took mine home today, so did I haven't. No, I haven't. Delicious. Oh, you oh, they're, the, they're, the powder. They're, they're scientists or whoever they use to formulate because it's organic. It's good ingredients. They yeah. use artificial sweeteners. They crush the flavor. <laughs> they make the best, oh, I know. you know, because you can always Out of taste the park every time. artificial sweeteners. The the synthetic ones are, you know, they just taste better than monk fruit and stevia. I mean, you know, that's just a fact. But Organifi just, I don't know how they do it, man. Yeah. They've got the best tasting, non-artificially sweetened stuff you'll find anywhere. Well, I mean, isn't that like, you've taught, I mean, I, you know me, I'm always like, it has to taste good. Isn't that like oh, especially what? for your kids? Dude. Well, I mean, it's, drink this. I, I don't yeah. care. It's for adults too, man. Sure. I mean, like it's. I mean, I know you have the ability to swallow any pill or take yeah. any powder <laughs> that we deal. Take but a majority of people, if it's awful, it's really hard. To, it's already hard enough to be consistent with taking yeah. supplements. It, it, if it's not good too, or at least like bearable, like it's. And Organifi did a really good job of not only having quality products that are organic but then in addition to that i like that they're going for the like they're they're now coming out with products for kids which is pretty good what are the ingredients yeah. in that uh specifically doug let me see if i can find that yeah, oh I, yeah I, I got uh orange and acerola cherry astrale uh, astragalus is how you pronounce astragalus that? astragalus yeah, uh, elderberry. elderberry propolis yeah these are all immune boosting uh for for children and for adults so oh, it's wow. good stuff by the way speaking of spending and government stuff you want to hear some fun some fun facts about this these expensive bills that they pass. Oh, let us know where the money's going. Yeah. Yay. So the $1.2 trillion spending bill, by the way, this is what they do. They'll put this bill through massive. You Sneak only have a bunch of little stuff. You have like two there. days to read it. <laughs> Nobody reads it. They push it through because if you don't, you don't love people or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But what they do is they squeeze in money and favors for their friends and they name it something. Yeah. Okay. So like, for example, <laughs> $850,000 went for a gay senior citizen home in Massachusetts. I didn't know that there were gay senior <laughs> Just, citizen oh. homes, but okay. All right. $15 million went for Egyptian college tuitions. Okay. $400,000 for a group that helps teens hide their gender. And then $500,000 for an anti-racist nature appreciation group at the San Diego Zoo. That's my favorite one. <laughs> San Diego. Anti-racist. Anti-racist nature, nature, nature appreciation group. I want to start a group like this. Wow. <laughs> you know what this is? This is like just, you're a congressperson. Uh, I'm your friend. Yeah. How can you give me I half a million? Yeah. Group. I'm gonna make a name of a group. They can't it, touch. No, they cannot touch. Anti-racist. Like it checks loving. all the boxes. What? Yeah. You're racist yeah, and you and hate we, nature and we love animals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I support that. We must send them money. Oh half a million dollars, bro. Oh my god. That I want is, to find this group. That wow. is the hustle, right? How there. are you an anti-racist nature? Uh, and that's such a gangster move. Let's let's name it something you can't even say. Yeah, that. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, no. So this stuff's always, <laughs> that's great. It kills dude. me. Uh, All right, do we have a shout out for, for the day? Uh, what what did we? Uh, I was actually we did the podcast one the other day. That was a uh, mic halfway through that. That was really good. What was the other one? We already uh, I gave the one on the octopus one, right? You guys mm -hmm. already, we already did mm -hmm. that one. Um, I feel like I had another one. I can't remember. You know, I might have one here. Give me a second here. Aren't you reading or pretending to read right now? No, I am reading actually. Okay. But I already said the book. <laughs> so there was a. Let me see. There's this influencer ah here we go so she talks about uh parenting she has an exceptional job communicating uh her name is destiny Ann. so destiny with an i dot ann on instagram uh about 60 something thousand followers really good information uh for parenting so if you're a parent you got little ones and you want some good info go check that out Look, you're not what you eat, you're what you digest and what you absorb. There's a company that makes a product called Masszymes that are digestive enzymes for those of you that eat a high protein diet that want to break down those proteins and amino acids, get them to the target tissues and want to break down those fats for your brain, for your nervous system, break down those carbohydrates for energy. Digestive enzymes can help you do that. This is also good for those of you that sometimes get bloated after meals or just feel like you don't digest very well. You take them with your meal and it helps break things down. Go check them out. Go to buyoptimizers.com. That's B-I-optimizers.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10. 
get 10% off your order. All right, back to the show. First question is from Sir Brenner. Can you talk about how blood type affects nutrition and does blood type affect training? Oh, wow. It's no. been a while since we've talked about this. Yeah. Doesn't affect either. Yeah. There was a book that was uh, a great, great marketing uh, yeah. ploy. And it was like a blood type diet. And the theory was, you know, type O, for example, which is the universal donor, the original blood type, right? So you they eat more chicken, less red meat. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. no, I, no. I think it was that they evolved from hunter gatherer, so the diet should be more hunter gatherer. Uh, right? Type yeah. A came later, so some dairy's okay and some grains are okay. Type B, and it was really just an, an invented theory that sounds cool because it sounds like it has some science, but there's zero zero data to support. And the, the data to support how it's been effective for the people it is, is that the, the same data that supports that anybody that starts tracking or doing anything yeah. sees yeah. results. Yep. So yeah. what you what you see, I, my roommate who uh, was a chef, smart guy too, right? Like he had these books and I remember uh, he, I mean, he knew I was obviously the fitness guy. So he was just like, oh, you got to read this, bro. It's blowing my mind. And yep. I've been following this diet and I feel so good and this and that. And it's like, no, it's because you're, you're following a diet. diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, because you're actually paying attention to what you eat. And like that in itself is the, is showing you the results. It has nothing to do with that. You're a type whatever. And you're eating, you're eating more of this and less of that. Did it's you like, know that in, in Japan for a while, they were, they were look, they would, you look at your blood type in job interviews. Maybe Doc can look, Doug this, can look this up, but I believe this was a trend because this was like a theory that, and again, it hasn't been proven in any way, shape or form that your blood type has anything to do with now, the, now, blood type is associated with like some have a higher instance of certain types of diseases mm. and others can be more protective against things like malaria and stuff like that. But when it comes to diet and exercise, uh, there's there's nothing. There's more. I think there's more correlation going on with where what region your family came from than, of course. than, yeah. than your blood type. Yeah. So if you came from a certain region, it's more likely that, what's it say? Yeah, blood per type personality theory is another one. Many <laughs> people in Japan and Korea have been discriminated against wow. because of their blood type. I'd love to know what their theory says. Right. Like, what do they say about the different blood types? These do you guys know assholes. what your blood types are, by the uh, way? I don't know what mine Yeah, I don't is. really know. Really? To be honest, yeah. yeah. I'm O. I know that because I give oh, so blood. Oh, you're universal donor. And they call me. Is it O plus and negative or both? You know, both are universal. Yeah, right? yeah. So, huh, interesting. Yeah, there's no there's no data to support anything in relation to diet or, or exercise. Next question is from SLF2021. If you don't have access to heavier weights to have constant progression of overload to build muscle, would increasing the time under tension with a lighter weight still develop gains or is the overload realistically the most optimum or only way? Yes, to a point. Right? What, what, what was the episode that we did? What did we title that one? Where Different ways nine, to- Nine ways to progressively overload, I think it was what it was. Yeah, Something yeah. like that. So that's I think that's important one. that you understand that. Like that's a good episode to go listen to. Yeah, because you could add reps, add weight, you could increase your range of motion and you could slow down the reps. Those are the ones that I remember uh, or that I use the most. But- to a point for sure. Now, if you get to the point where one rep is taking you 30 seconds, well, now you've turned that set into an endurance uh, type of strength training. Mm -hmm. But I mean, most people don't do a four second negative and that's hypertrophy. Like that's muscle building. Yeah. So most people, you just take a four second negative or a five second negative and they have to drop the weight by a good 20% just to be able to complete the the you know the the desired number of reps changing the exercise is also yeah. a way to progressively overload right if mm -hmm. uh, if you do you know bilateral squatting all the time and then switching to bulgarian split squats watch what happens i mean you're going to completely develop or uh, stability was a component of that too. Like if yep. you never trained yeah. any sort of, uh, it, you know, and range or end range strength, yep. you know, because it's, that's something too. Like, I mean, you don't want to, obviously it's like a whole nother exercise because you know, your, your, your body's not used to that. Um, it's not familiar. It's not providing enough strength in that yeah. range. I, I, for me, now that I'm older, if I feel stronger, I don't add weight. I slow the. I was down. just gonna say, and in, in fact, I'm gonna go on a limb and say, unless you're a uh, an, an athlete who your 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 sport is to lift more weight, right? So powerlifting mm -hmm. or Olympic lifting, then you're probably better off actually using some of the other techniques to progressively overload besides always just adding weight to yes. the bar. That's the easy one, right? It's like, oh, I did this much, so I'm getting stronger. Let's add more weight. But there's a lot of different ways that you can challenge a movement to continually build muscle and get stronger. It doesn't need to be this, you know. No, uh, when I'm doing a set and I'm about to, let's say I want to hit 10 reps and I'm at number eight and I'm like, oh, I can probably do five more reps. I slow down. 
I'll pause in the stretch. I'll squeeze a little harder and I'll make it in at rep number 10. And that's way better. Yeah. In terms of risk, uh, uh, you know, of injury. It gives you more longevity. Total. I totally. mean, and that's the thing. It's like, I think uh, people get caught in that just always trying to add more weight yes. and load. And then you're going to hit a, a plateau. You're going to inevitably just hit that that max potential in that direction. Whereas if you filled in and did all these other techniques, it would actually progress you even further than you could have. Next question is from Alicia Thresher. You talk a lot about how to speak or approach family about fitness and health, but how do you approach the topic towards your own children who are leading sedentary and unhealthy lifestyles? Oh, I like this question. Yeah, so a good question. it depends on the age, but of course, ideally, the children are born into an environment where this is just the way that the family lives. I think the most impact you can have on your kids is to be the example yep. and it be a quiet not like you don't, you're not pushing it on anybody. It's just, this is not a lot of intensity behind. You don't even have to say anything about it. You just do it. Kids are around you. And the next thing you know, they pick up on it. Consistently. Just consistently. I think this becomes more of a challenge. This is very, I can see, uh, you know, I I definitely have compassion for parents who pick up health and fitness. Oh yes. And their kids have already grown up in a different environment. hundred percent. That's like, and then now they're trying to, you know, influence their, their 11 or 12 year old or 13 year old into doing this because they've, you know, I, I really like, I really like hearing both of you guys talk about this. Cause I think you guys both have really different households. Um, and you obviously both are health and fitness is a priority in both your households, but have very different, like your kids are into different things. Um, and so it's interesting to hear how you both, you know, navigate this. Like I know you, Sal, you have your sons more into like robotics and mm-hmm. uh, gaming and things like that. I know your boys are somewhat in that too, but one of the things I've, I've, I've witnessed Justin do is Justin's a very outdoorsy, active person. And I think when I think about like when the time comes where maybe my son is less, like the, the first thing that comes to mind for me is like, I will need to go do more of that stuff. Like, uh, you know, recently I've talked about wanting to get more and back into basketball shape and things like that. And part of that motivation too, is that I want to see my son, my, I want my son to see me doing that stuff. And Mm -hmm. so it's just a part of our life. It's not like me going, Hey, get outside and go play. You know, like dad sits, sits on his phone or Mm -hmm. gets on the computer. It's like, uh, that's going to be really tough to do versus, Where's dad going? Oh, I'm heading to the park to go play some hoop. You want to come down with me and hang out at the park or throw the football? Yeah. Like, so I think that the the best way to encourage and this dep- this this would be the same too for the the challenge that Sal brought up, which is you know the hardest. And I've had clients right. The hardest are for sure a, a family that has decided to become a health and fitness family, and they already have nine, twelve, thirteen year olds. By the way, when you do that, what you don't want to do is just all of a sudden change everything and say nothing to the kid yeah. because that's gaslighting them. Yeah. Uh, what you want to do is you want to sit them down if they're old enough, right? So let's say you have a 13 year old and now you're like, we're going to change things. You sit them down and you say, look, I'm going to be going on this journey to improve my health and fitness. We're going to start eating differently in the house and I'm going to be exercising regularly and we're going to be doing more outdoor activities. I know it's a big change. It's going to be different. It's going to be kind of an adjustment but it's something that I really want to do and it's it's good for me. And then be consistent with it. What you don't want to do is say it and then not do it because then the kids going to be like, I don't believe anything you say. But you got to say something versus when they're born into it, you don't say anything at all. You just live it and you do it, in which case they're in it. They're in it without even realizing like yeah. this is how our family yeah. is. And that's how I feel. I mm-hmm. feel like Justin's done such yes. a good job of that with his family. Like and almost probably to a fault, he would say, because I know his boys get stir crazy if oh, they're yeah. if they're in the house for <laughs> longer. Mm-hmm. Well, you've seen us on vacation. Yeah, it's yeah. like I, yeah, it's a little bit of a, a challenge there because yeah, we're I have to I have to get out, I have to do things, I have to move, I have to you know, have activities planned and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, it's just that's sort of the precedent that was set. But um, you know, it, it it's challenging because you don't always want to do that. No, it's a, I, the reason why I'm bringing it up is I think you do a really good job of this and I've watched that and I want to model some of those behaviors. There's been times where we all go to like our trucky place and all of our families are there. And I, I am definitely the person on vacation. I don't want to do shit. I want room service, put my feet up. Yeah. I'm on vacation. And I watch Justin yeah. sometimes get up at nine o'clock in the morning, first thing in the morning, and he's packing his family up and they're off to the the water or they're off to outdoor fishing or they're doing something. It's like, man, that's, I'm sure there's times where you're like, man, I, I actually just want to sit down and relax without him and do nothing, times, yeah. which means the kids could very well default to playing video games on their iPad. And yeah. it's like, hey, if I don't want them to do that, 
What's better than telling them, no, you can't play yeah. games on the iPad is, hey, let's go fishing or hey, let's go do that. So, you know, again, this falls back, I think, on us parents to be more proactive in those situations, even when we don't really want to, because we care so much about modeling those behaviors to our kids that we tough. I mean, I think that's part of being a dad. I think that's totally. part of being a parent. It's like, you know, some of that shit is you isn't always better. fun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Next question is from Mitzi RTRCT. How to choose between ashwagandha and rhodiola for stress and why? Great question. Both <laughs> are known as adaptogens. So both of them improve the ability, the body's ability to deal with stress. So which one do you pick? Well, they're both very different. Ashwagandha is more of an enzeolytic uh, when it comes to its effects. In other words, it'll be more relaxing. It'll kind of bring things down a little bit. It's not going to make you hyper or give you more energy. It's just going to kind of bring things down. So if you need, if you're overstressed and you want something that's also going to give you kind of an anti-anxiety effect, then go with ashwagandha. Rhodiola has this mild stimulant effect. If you want an adaptogen that's also going to give you some energy and kind of fuel you through workouts or push you a little bit, then go with rhodiola. But you got to be very honest with the kind of person that you are because if you really need to bring things down, the rhodiola might not be for you. So that's the big, those are the big distinctions between when, the two. I mean, when you yep. say that is like the, probably the most important is probably how you personally, cause I, yep. I don't, I tend to not feel as good off of road. It's rhodiola, right? That rhodiola. I, yeah. Rhodiola is, and some people love that. Some people take it and they're like, it's amazing, but it probably, and they both, here's the funny thing. They both improve athletic performance. They both have been shown to help people build strength and build, build muscle. Just because you can handle the stress a little bit more appropriately. With both of them, yeah. right? But rhodiola, like you took rhodiola before going to bed, you're not going to get good sleep. You took ashwagandha before bed, you'll get really good sleep. Um, so you got to kind of know what you need more of. The challenge though is sometimes everybody says they, they need more energy. When in reality, I'm like this. Hmm. I don't always need things to, to give me a get stimulant spiked. effect. Yeah. In fact, ashwagandha sometimes makes me have more energy because it brings things down. And calms me out. Now, I know yeah. uh, Organifi's Green Juice has ashwagandha. What has rhodiola out of our partners? Red juice. Oh, the red juice Organifi's Red Juice has, it has rhodiola. rhodiola in there. So I would go red juice as a pre-workout and the green juice anytime. And you'll have those adaptogens in there yeah, perfectly. Yeah. Look, if you like the show, check out our free burn fat guide or lose fat guide. You can find it at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at mindpumpjustin on Instagram. I'm at mindpumpdestefano and Adam is at mindpumpadam. 